Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, here with Lacey, who's my lone chicken, very temporarily, and we are doing some things out here, well, I'll be honest, she's not doing any of the work. Sorry, Lacey, you're cute. Um, she's my supervisor, but we have learned a couple of things over the past few months with the crazy Texas heat. We've been like at 104, I think, um, and while I've had chickens in Texas for years and years, unfortunately, I have lost two in the last month, one was a senior hen named Gracie, and then one was a not as older hen named Lenore, and we are just devastated by those losses. So I have learned some new tips and tricks for keeping your chickens cool in the heat. Some of them are tweaks and like different things than I have done in the past, so I felt the need to hit record um, because as I know better and do better, I wanna be able to teach you as well. Of course, I'm not telling, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Um, if I do have affiliate links, you're welcome to use them. It just helps support my family, but this is not about like, product placement. This is just about, oh, I learned this and I'm going to do better for my flock and hopefully you can too. So first things first, and I know there are planes going and I'm trying to not get Lacey like pooping on camera because the internet doesn't need more videos like that. But um, there are a couple of things that I'm doing differently that I was just like, ooh, and I think it's going to be more more better. Oh my gosh, I'm a teacher, guys. Um, that I think it's going to be an improvement because we do hope to bring some new chickens in. Um, we're going to get a cold front in Texas here in the next week or two. We're going to drop down to 95. Woo! So I'm going to have to like bust out my, you know, my parka. But um, a couple of things I wanted to teach you, and some of them I apologize because, again, I've, I've done content in the past about keeping your chickens cool. Some of the things that I'm going to teach you were different than I said in those videos. So this is better. Um, the first is that don't give your chickens frozen treats. Just like if you were, um, you know, you just ran a marathon, you don't need to be chugging a whole bunch of ice water. It can give you really bad stomach cramps and it can kind of put your body into shock. The same is true of your chickens. Yes, they need access to cool, clean water all the time. And I'll give you some more tips in a minute. But when it comes to purely like drinking water, they don't need anything frozen because, you know, the difference between 104 degrees and then you giving them, I don't know, strawberries that are 30 degrees, that's too much of a temperature difference. So yes, things that are cool and clean, yes, but don't worry about it doing frozen. It can actually end up putting your chickens into shock. The next is that your chicken's feathers don't need to get wet. Now, if I'm gonna pan back to her, please don't poop on camera. Um, if I pan back to Lacey, all of her like smooth feathers up at the top, those are waterproof feathers, all of her main feathers. Now, without getting like too embarrassing, if I zoom in on her undercarriage and you can see she's stress molting because of the heat, the floofy feathers down underneath, like in her undercarriage, if you will, those like the down and the fluff, that stuff's not waterproof. So it will get like wet and soggy and, you know, just look like wet feathers. But the top ones are waterproof. Um, and that's one reason why chickens preen because their body makes oil and then they use their beak to essentially kind of like comb it between all of the feathers for feather maintenance. But that oil that they're spreading on their feathers does help with waterproofing. Ta-da! Same thing is true with ducks. Um, but anyway, they don't need that part of their body wet. Um, it doesn't really help them because if it's waterproof, then you getting them wet, it doesn't really make a difference. It is your chicken's skin. Um, and don't really think about the comb and waddles on their face. I mean, yeah, technically that's exposed skin too that's not covered with feathers, but don't pretend that that's not what I'm talking about. I mean their legs and particularly their feet. And the way you can do that is don't worry about, I know in years past, if I pan up a little bit, I had misters like hanging from the ceiling, almost like, you know, I was setting up a bar like on my porch or on a restaurant. It's not for misting the air. I need the ground to get wet and I need it to be ground that's not rock. So as you can see, I'm waiting for her to get out of this area and then I'm going to rake it all these rocks out of here. Number one, because they're not as smooth, right? And number two, because the rocks are concrete and they're going to be holding in more heat. Um, but you need to get the ground wet, hence my sprinkler. And this is a sprinkler I may show you in another video, but it is the old school like spitting sprinkler, like, you know, like like that, that spits. And I have it cover like a wide arc and it's only gonna run literally between, I haven't decided yet, between two and four minutes once like every three hours. So number one, that's not really gonna rack up your bill of your water bill. Um, and of course, if you get rain or the day is cool, go shut off the automation, right? Or like, don't you don't have to go run it that day. They don't need it. But for me, excuse me, if it's over 90 degrees, I wanna make sure the ground is wet and Lacey will dig in it. Um, they just kind of squat in it. And what they're doing is they're trying to cool their body off. But don't worry about the air and don't worry about misters, literally just something on the ground. So you could have a hose that dead ends and you literally just like pop, 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 like poke holes in it. Or you can use, if I pan over a little bit, 
underneath my red bud here see that sad looking hose that's called a soaker hose and it is a soaker hose you can't even see the holes they're really small when the water's not running but when you um when you turn it on and mine is hooked up to like a hose like spigot it has a little connectors um when it runs the water just looks like it's leaking out from everything almost kind of like cheesecloth um, and so you could certainly use that. Your chickens are not want to, they're not going to want to go over in it while it's running. Okay. They're not like kids at the park and they want to run in the, like the sprinkler or the water hose that's going. They will wait until it shuts off. But I promise you, once they figure it out within like four or five minutes of that water shutting off, your chickens will all, bzz, they'll all migrate over. And like I said, they'll scratch around in the dirt. They'll just kind of squat in it. They'll stand in it. Um, and it's just cooling down. It's like a little radiator, right? If you cool down their feet, then as the blood moves through their whole body, the blood is cooled down at their feet and then it goes up through their body. Um, so that's another thing to think about. Cool, clean water. Um, and I'll do a, a video just exclusively on this later. If you see the water in the right side of your shot, um, that water, as you can tell, I clean it out like every couple of days and it's nasty. It's green, it's got algae in it, it's gross. Um, it can potentially have mosquito larva in it and it's just, it's just nasty. Um, but I read that you could put pure copper piping in it and there will be basically a chemical reaction and then crap won't grow in the water. And so I'm very intrigued. It does look like, I don't know if you, if you want to look at like, see what I mean, the indentations, it does look like it's starting to happen, um, but I'm not sure. Now, I do know if you've got larger animals that drink out of waterers, um, I do know that if um, like dogs or horses or larger animals, if they're drinking out of a waterer that's got copper piping in it, it can cause upset stomach indigestion. So look into that before you're like, real simple mama said for me to throw some pennies in my waterer. Like go do your research because this is new, but I dropped it in just to see. And my chickens also have like uh, five water sources at any given time. And I'm only testing it on that one. Um, but I'm interested to see, you know, obviously they need fresh, cool water access 24 seven, but you know, it's, it's a pain to come out here and like it, the water is just gross. Like I don't want them to have that life. So those are the things that we're thinking about. Um, I did get rid of the bird netting. Um, but you know, again, like having that sprinkler because I don't need to cool the air. I just need to get the ground wet. I need to get all these stupid rocks out of here and continue to rake them. You can see that I did, but then Lacey came over. So I stopped. I'm going to zoom out. Um, but trying to make sure that they have plenty of cover. They have plenty of shade. I'm not doing frozen treats anymore. That's like a strawberry mash. It's just cool strawberries and cool water that she could access and drink. Um, and I am bringing treats out to her every day, but it's stuff that's not going to increase her body temperature. So no scratch. Um, scratch is basically like junk food for chickens anyway. Um, chickens, the way their bodies stay warm in the winter, which it's like impossible to think about winter right now, but staying warm in the winter, chickens eat all the time. And it's kind of, it's kind of like constantly like throwing like little logs and little sticks on the fire. Like just keep adding fuel, keep adding fuel and it'll keep burning. That's what they do. Right, Lace? Tick, tick. Um, but I don't want to do that in the summer because the more that they're digesting like really high sugar content like corn and peas and stuff like that, um, the harder their body is working. So strawberries don't have like their their carb content is not the same. They're, it's called the glycemic index. Um, theirs is not as bad as things like corn and peas. So stay away from frozen stuff, but also stay away from stuff that's, um, you know, that's going to be like that really high glycemic index because... It's just, it may end up, again, like giving them frozen stuff, it may end up harming their body temperature more than helping them out. So those are some things that I'm doing that are new. Um, if I pan over, I'm going to re-put some reflective material on the outside of this coop. Um, I need to reseal it also, so I'm going to go buy that today. Um, I have solar fans. You can see the build here. Um, it's an old build and it's not ideal, but it's a hell of a lot better than nothing. Um, if I pan up a little bit more, I know the angle is not amazing. That's a big solar panel right there. So anytime that panel is in the sun, there's this window here and there's one identically like symmetrically on the other side. Um, and those fans, whoop, those fans, um, at least one of them, depending on how much sun it's getting, um, it's running. And again, you can rotate your fan to spin one way and spin the other. This one, I can feel the air coming out because I have the fan blades set to run so that they're pulling out the hottest air because hot air rises. So the hottest air in the whole coop is up here. Um, and of course, like my chicken, Lacey, she only roosts like on that bar. She's not way up here on the second floor, but anything I can do to help her. Um, and you can certainly, you know, look into getting more fans. You can run electrical, um, like from your house. You can, you know, make a poor man's air conditioning. Um, there's all different kinds of things you can do. Because I know I have rats coming around, I'm leery about running 
you know, electrical to the house because there's a million different places that a squirrel, rat, mouse, whatever can chew on it. Um, but this is literally just hooked up there and then in the coop and then right here. So that to me is not as big of a risk. Um, it's not nearly as big of a fire risk or anything like that. So I'm trying to keep her cool. Um, hopefully she'll have some friends soon. You can see Lacey's not panting, but she is pretty pale. Um, so I'm going to have the, the sprinkler run again in a minute. Hopefully it won't scare her too badly. But those are the tweaks that I've made. Whoops, sorry. Those are the tweaks that I've made. Um, put down in the comments. I know some of y'all are dealing with crazy hot temperatures. But again, making some mud or something for your chickens, just cooling the ground. The dirt is totally fine. Uh, make sure they've got shade and make sure they've got clean water. And even if you think you're helping, you know, don't be giving them like really sugary stuff or um, really frozen stuff because we don't want to put their bodies into shock. But hopefully I'll have some more fun, exciting, happy videos to show you pretty soon. Stay cool, everybody.